So in my last speed draw, I talked about the whole fan character versus original character debate and how I generally didn't like the FC label due to three reasons. If you haven't watched that video, there's a link in the upper corner for you to click on, so please be sure to do so as it's a precursor to what today's topic is about, which is gatekeeping. Specifically, when it comes to character creation for pre-existing fandoms and series. But first, let's define gatekeeping. Gatekeeping, defined by Google from Oxford Languages, is the activity of controlling and usually limiting general access to something. Which is a nice formal definition, but in our context, we're looking more for the urban or slang term, which this one here from Wiktionary really drives it home. This one states in regards to the internet, to limit another party's participation in a collective identity or activity, usually due to undue resentment or overprotectiveness. I can't deny how true this is because I myself was a gatekeeper. I know, shocking. I can hear your gasps now. It was a collective pastime for my friends and I back in late mid middle school, intermediate school for those of you not in the States, to look at the multiple kinds of fan characters, whether they're posted on the internet or found inside the back of a Shonen Jump magazine volume showcasing fan art and, well, mock them. Nevertheless, we never took it as far as actively writing or leaving comments that at the time would ultimately be berating the individual and tearing down the creation apart purely because we felt we knew better. Somehow, some way, our pubescent to adolescent brains knew better on how to write a convincing fan character, thus would cast judgment on those who clearly didn't understand the way. My friends all loved the lore of different anime series to where it became like golden law and oh, Lordy Lou, when you become passionate about something, you can also become overprotective. Now, I know some of you are saying, oh, well, Kimmy, you were a kid, so it's excusable. And to that I say, well, it explains, but it doesn't excuse my past behavior. Even today, full grown adults will gatekeep. And this has happened to me not too long ago with a close friend. Which, by the way, my dear friend, I know you watch my videos, I love you, but this example really fits too well. We were discussing Harry Potter sometime maybe a year or so back, and I don't exactly remember what I said, but I think it just pushed the boundaries of the established HP canon and lore, cause guess what? Yes, I was creating fan character for the franchise with my friend. Anyway, during our discussion, that push actually made my friend a little testy, clearly indicating to me that they were overprotective of Harry Potter's mythos in some regard, and it just took me by surprise. Regardless, I wasn't mad or affronted in any way after the fact, but in the moment, I do remember how generally upsetting it felt to be put down in some regard like that. And do note, I didn't take it to heart, and I still love that friend of mine to this day. Long story short, it really doesn't feel good. How I felt there is no different than how I felt 10 plus years ago in high school, or secondary school for those of you not in the States, when my clique of friends gatekeeped me. All right, here we go. More story time. Ah, uh, yes. Back in my first and second year of high school, I hung around a group of friends that were primarily my sister's age. We all sort of were the collective anime weeaboos in school, and we just, and we're just that off brand of nerd that many of the other teens labeled us as plain weird. Didn't really know what to call it, I guess. That was my label in high school weird. 
Well, one day I was introduced to Full Metal Alchemist, the first anime adapta adaptation produced in the early 2000s by going to Hastings and renting the first disc to watch. <laughs> Fun fact, I remember telling the group of friends I didn't want to watch it if it didn't have dragons in it. For whatever reason, younger me felt that was the only reason why I should be introduced to this new thing. Which the group told me, oh yeah, no, it does. Ed crafts a spear with a dragon on it. And I was sold. No argument, no questions asked. Hands down, let's watch it. <laughs> Speaking of Ed, the moment that golden braided hair wonder hit my 15 year old-ish eyes, I knew I was in love. Granted, he wasn't my first fictional anime crush. Oh, no, 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 no. That was Gary Oak from Pokemon, but that's besides the point. Later, when I revealed to the group who I liked, I was met with the oh-so-lovely answer of... Oh, you can't like Edward Elric because he was claimed by... I can't use their real name, so... Rose. Yeah. So apparently for us weeaboo girls of the group who crushed on fictional characters, they basically said, nah, you can't crush on so-and-so and so because blah of the group likes them. They gatekeeped me from indulging in fictional crushes, which I guess was a way to, well, keep the peace as we don't want friends fighting over this fictional individual, God forbid. Don't want anyone to get dare I say, jealous now, do we? If I could go back in time, it's one of those moments, my peeps. So from Ed, I moved on to Roy, who was claimed by someone else, then to Envy, who was also claimed by the same one who claimed Ed, mind you. Ugh. I distinctly remember sheepishly asking the group, well, who can I like? And then someone answered, oh, you can have Alphonse. That's right. The precious cinnamon roll in the suit of armor purely because they didn't want me thirsting over the fictional flesh bags. Rude. Then when the movie came out, they all suddenly liked Alphonse and I was over there like, excuse me. Well, uh, <coughs> anyway, exaggerated bitterness aside. I also did the same to that good friend of mine I mentioned earlier with the Harry Potter lore. When we were younger and getting into the Tales of the Abyss, an anime-styled game that we all just fell in love with, she started liking Luke, and I was, oh, you can't like Luke because he belongs to Tyr. Why did I do that? I remember how taken back my friend was, and the more I think about it, I think I did that because I was hurt being gatekeeped, and hence made another hurt because I was hurt, so therefore it's justifiable, which wasn't right. Mistakes were made. Being in that group of friends, you had like two options when it came to like, you know, getting into anime. One, like the character that was claimed in secret and never tell anyone about it, which a lot of us did, or two, discover a new anime series first, so you could be the First one to stake claim and have your desired pick. <sighs> but guys, I was the youngest of the group pretty much. And the second option like never happened to me because I hardly discovered or consumed anime as fast as them. I honestly feel they sort of pitied me because I was the youngest and because I was the baby of the group they were like oh we can share this character with you yada yada which is a better solution but it's like they didn't share with other friends that weren't the baby of the group it was biased so as someone who is a gatekeeper and has been given the lovely gatekeeping treatment up front and personal what does it bring to the table reality check nothing. It festers and can grow into something very toxic and in blatant terms you become, well, a fandom bully. I feel a level of gatekeeping comes out especially when someone makes a fan character. 
As soon as they share it, regardless if it's in person or up online, the gatekeepers of that community come out. And it feels like, it feels like that moment in Cinderella where the stepsisters just start ripping apart poor Cinderella's dress. Your fan character is like that gorgeous pink dress that was crafted from other discarded vestments of the stepsisters. You may have borrowed ideas, themes, even designs from other people to canon characters themselves, and then those gatekeepers come stomping in all, how dare you? You stole my idea for my character. Or they look too much like, I don't know, insert canon character from franchise. You just clearly lifted their appearance and slapped on your design. Ah! It's a damn mess, my peeps. Slander aside, that to me isn't even the biggest negative impact on your character as a whole. What's worse, in my opinion, is when you start listening to those gatekeepers. By doing so, you begin to craft something that lives up to their standards, not your own. You may feel, for whatever reason, you need to somehow prove yourself, and then they'll see your character is worthy if they can just somehow pass this bar they've said yada 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 yada. No. Stop. Stop that. Your character is already worthy, and they're amazing purely on the basis of being created by you. There's so many positives creating a fan character. The number one reason being, you're having fun. I know I do every time a series really grabs my attention that before I know it, I'm taking out my pencil and sketching up concepts of someone new. Now that I've said this, I'm sure many of you will be scouring my art where I haven't deliberately said who or what they're intended for, trying to discover which ones are my fan characters, and honestly, have fun. I may disclose which franchise they're intended for, but I'm not going to disclose their story. That stuff is for me. <laughs> anyway, having fun aside, fan characters allow you to dip your toes into character creation. What makes a well-written character and what makes a poorly written character? Do know that just because you made a fan character doesn't mean they're poorly written. I've seen plenty of poorly written original characters, and perhaps discussing how to craft a well-written character may be a different topic for a different speed draw. So I'm going to refrain and not go off on that tangent. Fan characters stretch your thinking, and I've had plenty of moments pondering, how would my character make a difference in this moment in the story? How would they affect these canon characters? Would the established or built-up relationships they've retained to this moment alter the course of this plot point or outcome? How involved are they in the main story, or would I prefer them to be in the background? What kind of consequences would happen as an outcome to their actions? It's just, it's so fun to indulge in, especially for me. They're an escape, an outlet for your creative energies. Yes, do be aware that when we upload anything for the world to see, the gatekeepers are always going to be there. But hopefully after anything I've said, it'll improve your way to approach the topic and ultimately give you the understanding I wish I had when I was younger. Don't let those gatekeepers knock you down. They're basically like trolls. And if there's anything I've learned being on the internet, it's to not feed the trolls. If you're looking for ways to improve your fan character and openly ask for opinions, I tend to keep in mind this little quote from Melissa Bolton. Don't listen to criticism from someone you wouldn't seek advice from. Which, granted, is much easier to say than to practice. I've been a people pleaser to the point I would disregard myself and my own thoughts and feelings. There'd be this need that, oh, I have to please this random person on the internet because blah, 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 no. It would have been nice if I had someone reach out and let me know, if you don't like what they said, don't take it to heart. There's a fine balance to constructive criticism and belittling. And unfortunately, when all you've been exposed to is belittling, 
You have no idea what constructive criticism is. Even when I went through college, I remember presentation day was the worst because it basically felt like, here's my project, now go ahead and tear it apart, my peers. Hmm, sounds like another topic I may have to discuss. If not, take some of my old characters and create a side-by-side -side comparison of belittling them versus constructive criticism. Anyway, please give me your thoughts. Have you encountered gatekeeping in the past? Even if you just want to let the lead out and rant to me those past experiences that just grinded your gears, put it in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts, your ideas, your opinions, your experiences. What has like, you know, what type of setbacks has gatekeeping brought to you? What type of situations that you've gotten out of? What How have you avoided gatekeeping? That's a good question. How have you avoided it? I want to read what you have to say. And despite all the setbacks that may have tried to sway you, go ahead and tell me, do you still create fan characters to this day? I'm gonna let you know now, if this video reaches 15 likes, I'll share up on Twitter my latest fan character on Twitter for y'all to see and which series she is for. So be sure to subscribe for more of this girl's content. And I will see you all in the next video. So remember everybody, be awesome. Be you. Akemi. Out.